Right, hello everybody. My name is Robin Achter and I'm an Office 365 and Azure developer at Delaware. I will be giving a short demo on the uh, machine translation SPFX extension that I built, which uh, basically lets you translate the content on your SharePoint pages. And it uses the Microsoft Translator Text API. Now, the goal of this web part uh, is to let your end users translate your SharePoint pages, but it's not going to translate the entire UI or the entire web page, but only the actual text content on your page. So it's only going to look at the text control web parts and translate that. Um, so let's dive right into the demo. So I have a basic uh, SharePoint page in here. Uh, with some content in English. There's also a people web part and the default comment section at the bottom. And when the page is loaded, you will see at the top that uh, the translation bar is loaded in there, which is just uh, basically a drop down with available languages to which you can translate your content. Uh, the available languages in here are configurable in the extension, but I will get to that later. Um, and when you select the new language, you will see the page gets blocked for a couple of uh, minutes. And then the content on this page in this case is translated to French. And as you can see, the, the ribbon in here, for example, is still in, the, in English, so in the user's language, but all the actual text content is translated to French in this case. Um, we also display a small disclaimer saying that it's translated by a, an API and that maybe some of the translation may not be that accurate. And then lastly, we also have this uh, button to reload the original, which is just going to reload the original page back into its original uh, language. So that's basically how the extension works. Uh, now let's see uh, what's be behind the scenes or what's under the hood uh, in the uh, application customizer. So there are uh, three main things that you can can configure in this extension. The first one is the supported languages, uh, which become available in the drop down you saw a minute ago. Um, if you go to the documentation of the translator text API, um, then there is this language support page, and you'll get a long list of all the available languages that are supported by the API. And it's this language code um, that we will needs in our configuration to make the languages available. Then we also, of course, need the API key. So when you create a new Azure resource for the translator text API, you will get an API key, um, which you will need to make your calls to the API endpoint. And then there's also an option to specify uh, a region for the API. So um, that's also documented in the API documentation. There are some base URLs by default. It is going to the global endpoint, but you can specify a specific region to target the endpoint or the URL for your specific region. Um, other than that, we're not doing that much in this uh, base customizer clause. Um, we're just initializing a translation service, which we're going to get into in a couple of minutes, uh, where we will be using the HTTP client of the SPFX framework. And we're also passing some page context properties like the page ID and the list ID to our translation bar. So if I go into this translation bar component, which is the one that's actually yeah, rendered on the page, um, there are two main things that we will be doing or that we are doing in the initialization. So the first thing we need to do is, of course, detect the language of the page. Um, we first go and fetch the page item. Uh, using PNPJS, very simple, using the current list ID and the current page ID. Uh, we can get the, the list item of the page um, and we get the title and the description. Uh, so if a description is available, then we use the page description to detect the language. Uh, if that's not yet available, then uh, we'll be just using the title. So we have this method to detect the language, which is actually going to the translation service uh, where we have this method, uh, which is calling the detect endpoint of the translator text API. Very easy to use. You can just pass in uh, the source text in the body and then make a post to the detect endpoint and you will get the result of um, detected languages. So the API will probably detect multiple languages, but they will, the API will always give a score on how 
confident it is uh, about the language that it's detected and a flag saying if it's uh, supported by the API. So if we detect the language with a score higher than 0 0.8 uh, and that's translatable, then we uh, use this language as the de detected language. And next to that, uh, in our initialization, we also have to get the available language uh, or the available languages. Um, and for that, we are using the available languages endpoint, uh, this one, the languages endpoint, sorry, which is just a get method. And this one will list all the available languages supported by the API. And then we map this list of available languages to our configurable languages in the application customizer. And for each language, we then return the native name, which is provided by the uh, API, and also the language code, uh, which we can then use later on in our translation bar to uh, actually do the translations. So once our translation bar is fully initialized, uh, we can start our translation. Like I said, we are only translating actual text control on the SharePoint page. So again, we are using PNP.js to load the client-side page based on the relative page URL that, that, that we are constructing here. Um, and once we have that, um, we have uh, the page, the client-side page, let's say, uh, we can use this find control method again from PNP.js uh, and pass in this predicate where, we are, where we're only going to return the controls of the type client-side text. So this will give us all our uh, text controls on the SharePoint page, uh, which we can then safely translate. Um, we are also translating the page title, uh, which is just uh, the title that we're getting from the client side page. So for each text control, um, we have this method to translate it. We are actually going to query the HTML DOM structure uh, based on this data SP feature instance ID. Um, which always matches the ID of the of the web part on the page. So based on based on the text control web part ID, uh, we can fetch the correct HTML element, and we can then start translating this HTML element. There are a couple of special things we do in here. If we look at the documentation of this translate endpoint, um, you will see somewhere in here that uh, the entire text included in your request cannot exceed 5,000 characters. Um, now, this is very possible that this is happening. So that's the first thing we are checking that the inner HTML of our, of our text that we are trying to translate uh, does not exceed, exceed those 5,000 characters. If this is not the case, we can just easily um, use the translate endpoint and pass in uh, the NF HTML, the language code that we want to translate it to, and then also say that we are translating HTML. So the API supports plain text as well as HTML. So if you put in HTML, you'll get the correct HTML structure back uh, where all your uh, CSS classes of inline styling uh, is still on there. Now, if the NF HTML is bigger than those 5,000 characters, we are going to fetch all the child elements and going to translate them one by one. So we have this sort of recursive function here. Um, so for each child element, we are again calling the same function and doing the same checks. So if it's still exceeding those 5,000 characters, then we are again putting it in the same function and so on and so on until all the child elements are translated. Now, if um, the element is bigger than those 5,000 characters, but it doesn't have any child elements anymore. So let's say one big paragraph with uh, more than 5,000 characters, uh, then we will run into an issue. Um, so we solve this using the break sentence API endpoint. And looking at the documentation for that one, uh, so the break sentence endpoint uh, for a specific uh, array element and can take up to uh, 10,000 characters, uh, which is already a lot more. Uh, and hitting one paragraph or one element uh, with no child and more than 10,000 characters uh, seems pretty unlikely. Uh, but if it still hits that, then of course we would have an issue. Uh, and this break sentence API endpoint will return to you uh, an array with the length of each sentence that it has detected. 
So once we have all those uh, lengths of all the sentences that were detected in the full text, we are going to subtract, or we are first going to calculate the start index and the end index of each uh, sentence, and then fetch the substring of the full content of that HTML element. And then we can just pass in that specific sentence to the translate API endpoint uh, and translate it as plain text instead of HTML. And then we are just replacing um, the sentence that we are translating with the result of the translation. So then everything on the page uh, will be translated and we can release the overlay and the, or the blocking uh, overlay and the entire page will be translated. So that's basically how this uh, extension works. So thanks everybody for your attention. Thanks. Before you actually close it, can you go one more time? Uh, can you go one more time the functionality just to just to say that in practice because the the UX because yeah, of course. it's so cool. So you just want to see the translation again? Yeah, happening. yeah, yeah. You, so let's translate it to Dutch this time. Because Hello. so just just as a Microsoft employee, it's just noting here and saying that well, obviously we should have this feature natively within a product. <laughs> <laughs> because as an as an optional thing, and sure, if you can translate the content using the, the the multilingual model which we have in the modern pages, which is basically copy of the same page. But this is this is pretty cool. Uh, as a if you don't have time to do real translation for all of the pages, if you are a smaller company, this kind of a way of approaching the same problem is is really really great so really nice implementation yeah. so indeed i can i can think it uh, it will bridge the gap uh, when you don't have all the translations manually created yet this exactly. can maybe uh, be a solution exactly exactly and and having that warning there is is really great so i'm a finn so as an example finnish and as a language is super complex and uh, so therefore the you can always see if if people have been using translation engines but but still you understand the, the text so sure it's not perfectly valid but still so good to have that that um, text there indicating that it has been machine translated as well so good i think that's in that's it in robin so really 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 cool stuff uh, absolutely uh, brilliant demo